I welcome you all in the second session of the first day of two week faculty development program on advances in computational and experimental research in physics organized by department of physics srm institute of science and technology ramaburam chennai now i request dr l sudha professor in department of physics srm ist ramaburam to give the welcome address a very good good afternoon to all of you who have joined the day one second session of the two week faculty development program organized by department of physics i take great privilege in welcoming dr masaru shimamura director of hamamatsu campus center for instrumental analysis and professor and also professor graduate school of science and technology shishuoka university japan thank you director for accepting our invitation to deliver lecture on an introduction to x ray photo electron spectroscopy and its surface quantitative technique he is one of the pioneers in green nanotechnology such as dye sensitized solar cells thermoelectric materials we are gifted and blessed to listen to his talk today afternoon thank you very much professor for uh, sparing your precious time with us this afternoon and it's a um, evening for you uh, professor shimamura's list of accomplishments is long hence i request my colleague uh, dr jayalakshmi to share his achievements and uh, i extend a call extend a warm welcome to dr navneet research assistant professor and dr arif harish assistant professor srmist katan kulathur i cordially welcome the faculty members and research scholars from universities institutes and colleges we would like to extend our gratitude to the other eminent speakers of two week faculty development program thank you all and have an enjoyable and fulfilling time of learning thank you thank you ma'am now i request dr v jayalakshmi assistant professor department of physics to introduce our resource person dr mazaru shimamura ma'am thank you ma'am it is my privilege to introduce dr mazaru shimamura professor graduate school of science and technology sishwaka university and also director of hamatsu campus center for instrumental analysis sushwaka university he is having more than 25 years of experience in nano science especially surface and interface sciences or the major field of his research he obtained doctor of engineering from sushwaka university in 1997 then he started to work in tokoho university as a research associate during this period the major research topic was surface instrumental analysis in 2002 he moved to shishoka university and he and be promoted to associate professor in 2008 and promoted to professor in 2015 his research areas has always been including surface and interface sciences in atomic scale based on his research background his research area has been extended to the green nanotechnology such as dye sensitized solar cell thermoelectric materials and sensor applications he has published three books and more than 90 journal papers he was awarded the young scientist award for the presentation from the japan society of applied physics in 1999 and takahani research award for young scientist from foundation for electronic engineering hamamatsu in 2003 he is a member of the japan society of applied physics and the japan society of vacuum and surface science he is also the deputy editor in chief of journal of surface analysis thank you ma'am now i request dr shimamura sir to take over the session sir thank you very much the uh, uh, kind introduction and also uh, i would like to say thank you very much uh, to uh, professor suda and organizer uh and also the assist uh, assisting me uh, the doctor by doctor nawanidan and doc, uh, dr harish so uh can i share my screen yes sir yes. okay yes Is it okay? The 
Yes. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, so let me start my uh, lecture. The title of my uh, lecture is an introduction to X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy XPS and its surface quantitative techniques. So uh, today I want to explain about the very basic of uh, XPS and also the, some uh, application part later. And before uh, explaining the XPS, I want to show my uh, laboratory, uh, the research topics. In my laboratory, uh, we are uh, doing uh, the following list researches. One is the self-assembly of organic molecules on the inorganic surface and its interface structure and 3D atom imaging by photoelectron holography and uh, X-ray fluorescent uh, holography. And also the theoretical calculation of electronic structure for uh, nanomaterials and uh, structural engineering and controlled growth and fabrication of titanium dioxide films for DSSC and also perovskite solar cells and gas sensing applications. And research on graphene-based quantum dots for bioimaging and interface engineering of uh, uh, nanostructures for thermoelectric uh, energy conversion. And the last one is the nanomaterials for gas sensor applications. So uh, very widely uh, spread research is uh, listed in the, uh, this slide. So, uh, to, but the point is my research includes, always includes the surface and also the interface structures, but uh, in atomic scale. That is the key topic of uh, my laboratory research. And uh, I want to explain XPS, but before that, uh, I uh, would like to say about the significance of analysis method selection. And uh, if we have a uh, necessary information for material and uh, device development, we have several different type of uh, analysis methods. For example, one is uh, morphological observation, including the microscopic method, SEM, TEM, uh, and optical microscopy like that. And the second one is elemental and chemical analysis. And third one is the crystal structural analysis, and also uh, defects and impurity analysis. And for example, before my student, one of my students used XRD, X-ray diffraction for elemental detection. Sometimes it's okay, but if the uh, material includes the uh, amorphous phase, it is not possible to measure the elemental information. So uh, the, if we have a detailed knowledge of analysis and then we can select the suitable method. And uh, uh, if so, uh, we can obtain materials properties effectively. And uh, there is a uh, uh, one tale. Do you know the Aesop fables? The, the title of the tale is The Fox and the Stork. It's a very uh, funny story. And if we choose the suitable tool, then we can get the correct information. And uh, I always tell this to the students. And uh, then we want to move on to the focus on the elemental and the chemical analysis. And this is the uh, list of uh, several methods. And uh, for solids, solid materials, there are several uh, methods of elemental and chemical analysis. And for organic materials, solid materials, mass spectroscopy and NMR 
or time of light secondary ion mass spectro spectrometer uh, called TOF-SIMS, they are used. And uh, for inorganic materials, XRF, X-ray fluorescent, the electron probe for microanalysis, EPMA, or uh, the EDS or WDS, they are used for elemental analysis. And XPS, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, is used both uh, organic materials and inorganic materials. This is an important point of uh, XPS. The most important point is of the table is the detecting depth. And in the case of uh, XRF, it is possible to measure the uh, micrometer scale uh, depth information. And in the case of EPMA, the detecting depth is from uh, 100 nanometer to 1000 uh, nanometer. And the point is, uh, it is very surface sensitive for XPS. The de detecting depth is a just a few nanometer. It's a very important point of XPS. So please think about this kind of material. The diameter of A labeled A material, diameter of A material is like a 100 nanometer. And it is coated by B material, B. The thickness is uh, around 10 nanometer. So volume ratio of A versus A to B is 1 to 0 0.75, we can calculate. And if we use the XRF, the X-ray can penetrate the uh, material fully. And the fluorescent X-ray also can penetrate all of the sample. So the uh, detecting ratio is same as the material as it is. But if we use EPMA, the uh, B ratio is increased because of the uh, de detecting depth. And in the case of XPS, we cannot detect the A element A because of the surface sensitivity. If there is a, a 10 nanometer thick B material, we always observe the B material only. So this, the surface sensitivity difference is the key point for uh, the uh, elemental analysis. But in other words, this XPS can select the information of the surface. That's also very important. And if we use the uh, etching uh, method, then we can etch the material. Then uh, the elemental ratio F to B changes. From that information, we can also guess the uh, surface and bulk information of the materials. Like that, always we have to think the escape depth of the information. This is becoming a key of XPS. So this is a list of uh, feature of XPS. XPS is elemental analysis that I, as I told you, and with a very high surface sensitivity. It's a few nanometer sensitivity. And uh, it used the core level electrons. And uh, ultra high vacuum is needed. This is because of the uh, detection uh, method. We use electron energy analyzer. And for the purpose uh, of you, uh, using the electron energy analyzer, ultra high vacuum is needed. And also, as I told you, it's very surface sensitive. So if the 
vacuum pressure is rather high, then always impurity attaches on the surface. So that is not good for the uh, material information. So always ultra high vacuum is needed. And detection limit is about 0 0.1 atomic percent. And uh, depth analysis is also available with uh, ion sputtering. And the chemical analysis is available. So the last one is very important. Chemical analysis is not equal to the elemental analysis. This information, the later I will uh, give uh, this chemical analysis uh, details. And uh, XPS is also called ESCA. This is because of the chemical analysis. The meaning of ESCA is electron spectroscopy for chemical analysis. So this is a uh, feature of XPS. And then let me explain why it is very surface sensitive. This is because of the uh, mean free path. Uh, it's a uh, average distance of an electron traveling before inelastic uh, scattering. So uh, maybe you know about the elastic scattering and inelastic scattering of electrons. The elastic scattering is the kinetic energy is constant, preserved. But in elastic scattering, the kinetic energy is changed and excitation of secondary uh, electrons or lattice vibration occurs. This uh, is you, the energy is used for the excitation of secondary electron or the lattice vibration excitation. So uh, this is the curve of the uh, mean free path. And the horizontal axis is uh, electron energy. And uh, this is the, this, area is the energy, just energy that is used for XPS measurement. The electron energy from 100 electron volt to 1000 electron volt. And the mean free path of these electrons is from a five ohm strom to uh, 20, roughly 20 ohm stroms. That means two nanometer. So the, we can uh, irradiate, uh, we can use the X-ray for the excitation. The X-ray can penetrate into the bulk, like a micrometer scale, but excited photoelectron uh, cannot come out from the surface if the uh, excitation is deeper part of the sample. So only the uh, photoelectrons near the surface can, uh, can uh, move on to the vacuum. Uh, so uh, the, this is the uh, reason of the XPS is surface sensitive. So the energy of the electron is this range. Low energy electron cannot uh, come out from the sample if that is in the bulk position. And look at this uh, figure. This is a, a part of a XPS spectrum. And for example, this one is O1S peak and it's a carbon one S peak is here. And uh, if we uh, see the XPS peak, after the, uh, each peaks, it becomes uh, like a step. The, there is a peak and a step and a peak and step. So background changes. This background step structure of XPS peak at high binding energy side. Peak is here and this is a high binding energy side. This is because of increasing of inelastically scattered electrons. For example, in here, for uh, in the case of uh, 600 binding energy, uh, the, this electron is uh, energy loss electron over O1s, like that. It becomes almost continuous, but it is originated from a O1s peak. 
So uh, like this, the background includes the uh, inelastic, inelastically scattered electrons, photoelectrons. And also this is an example XPS wide spectrum in the case of ion. Uh, look at here, uh, it's, it's a peak of photoelectron. The excitation is uh, MgK alpha is, magnesium K alpha is used for the excitation. And in here, uh, the two P peaks of photoelectron and two S peak of photoelectron. And also here, uh, there are uh, OJ peaks, OJ electron peaks. It is called LMM. So uh, let me explain about the photo electron and OJ electron excitation next. So this is a, a photo electron emission by X-ray. And uh, this graph shows the uh, photo electron emission by X-ray. And like this picture, uh, it's a, uh, uh, for example, in here, here is a nuclei and uh, they, are, they are core levels, core electrons. And here is a band, balance band and conduction band above. And so that means it's a Fermi level. If the X-ray is irradiated with the energy of H nu, the electron, core electron can be excited by the energy of X-ray. And for example, binding energy is the uh, energy between the core level and the Fermi level. So uh, if we think about this energy con conservation, the kinetic energy of photoelectron is given by this equation H nu, that is uh, X-ray energy minus uh, Eb binding energy of uh, core electron minus phi. Phi is the work function. It's a very simple equation. And uh, the H nu is fixed. And if we uh, have uh, uh, core levels like this, so we can obtain the uh, Ek value from this uh, equation. That means if the X-ray is changed, the last one was uh, MgK alpha, but if we use the aluminum K alpha line, then kinetic energy changes. So this is a point, kinetic energy of photoelectron, is, it is depending on the X-ray energy. On the other hand, the OJ electron is uh, emitted by this process. And first uh, process is removing of core electron. Then second step is the uh, higher energy electron can relax to the, uh, the hole here. And then by using this energy, another electron is emitted. This is the OJ electron. So uh, the kinetic energy of OJ electron is calculated by this uh, equation. The uh, EB1, EB1 is the binding energy of the uh, core electron. And uh, minus EB2, EB2 is the, this uh, binding energy. So this first part, EB1 minus EB2 is equal to the difference between these two states. And then uh, EB3 is the binding energy of the third electron that is emitted from the surface. So in this equation, we don't have uh, excitation energy. So uh, the kinetic energy of OSHA electron is always fixed. It's just depending on the element. So uh, like that kinetic energy of OJ electron is constant. And then uh, let me explain about the electronic structure of the solid. And uh, this is the same 
picture as before. And uh, this is a uh, uh, Coulomb potential curves. The electron in the bands are not localized energetically. So it's a widely spread uh, energy. But core level electrons are uh, very localized energetically. It's like a line. So uh, because of this one, this uh, feature, we can uh, use the core level electrons for detecting the element. That is very basic uh, point. And for all the electron notation, then uh, I want to move and look at this one. The, uh, this is the first excitation of a core electron, core electron. Then, uh, for example, in this case, the first one is uh, 1s orbital of the uh, atom. Here, it is uh, 1s and it's uh, in K shell. And second one is from, for example, 2s and then 2p electron is emitted. In this case, the, uh, the second one is uh, from 2s to 1s. So uh, it is called L1. Both are L shells, but uh, 2s is L1 and 2, uh, uh, L2 and L3, they are uh, two p states, uh, levels. So uh, we note the uh, OJ electron K, L1, L2, 3. This is a uh, precise notation of the OJ electron of this excitation process. But generally, we use just a KLL, removing one, two, three, the numbers here. KLL OJ, uh, this is the uh, usually used uh, notation. And then uh, I would like to explain about the measurement system and XPS, X-ray source is used like uh, aluminum K-alpha line or magnesium K-alpha line. And this is a very simple case, but uh, sometimes we, uh, a grating is used. Uh, this is uh, for uh, monochromatic X-ray. Uh, Monochromatic X-ray has a low, uh, um, that means low energy width, that means high resolution. And uh, this is the uh, rough image of our electron energy analyzer. And uh, uh, this is a sample and photo electron is emitted from the sample. And then first part is uh, uh, Electro, electrostatic lens, but sometimes magnetic lens is also used. A magnetic lens is located just under the sample. Uh, by using magnetic uh, force, the electron can smooth, smoothly uh, moving into the uh, electron energy analyzer. And uh, also, uh, as I told you the electrostatic lens is used. And then here, this is the key point of the uh, electron energy analyzer. Electron is the uh, negatively charged particle. So if we have a, a plate, electrostatic plate, uh, more negatively charged, then electron repulsion uh, force uh, is occurred. And if there is a, a positively charged plate is here, then it's also move like this. And adjusting these, the energy, uh, the potentials of plus and minus, we can uh, precisely select the certain kinetic energy electron here. So this is a basic uh, scheme, schematic of uh, hemispherical electron energy analysis. And this is a picture of uh, Kratos XPS system that is uh, located in my uh, university. I think uh, Phi 
RBAC5 uh, photoelectron spectroscopy system uh, is seen in SRM uh, IST. So both are basically uh, similar. Uh, it's including X-ray monochromator and X-ray source and electron energy analyzer. Very high sensitivity with very high sensitivity. So uh, the XPS composed with these uh, things. And then let me explain about the uh, chemical analysis. This is very important feature of uh, XPS. This is the uh, XPS of polyethylene terephthalate uh, PET. Very well uh, used materials. And uh, this is a wide scan. This wide scan is used for elemental analysis. For example, here uh, we observe O2S peak, carbon 1S peak, O1S peak, and OKLLOJ peaks. So uh, we only observe carbon and oxygen in the uh, spectrum. Then the right hand is a narrow scan result. It's a chemical analysis. And expanding uh, here, uh, it's a range is 280 to 300, just a t uh, 20 electron volt. That means only near the carbon one S peak. And this, there are uh, several peaks like this. And uh, I'll explain by following uh, picture. And this is the same feature, uh, polyethylene terephthalate uh, of XPS. There are actually four peaks. This is the uh, structure of a PET. And it includes a benzene ring and COO uh, system here and ethylene based uh, system here, part here. And uh, depending on the chemical uh, oxidation number, the peak is separated like this. For example, A is from uh, benzene ring. In here, the carbon, all carbon atoms, six co carbon atoms uh, has a bond only with the hydrogen and carbon. But here, uh, the, this carbon has a bond uh, with the uh, oxygen, two oxygens. So that means some outer electrons, that means the band electron are uh, uh, attracted uh, and it is moved toward the oxygen. And if we look at this carbon, it has uh, uh, one oxygen atom of four bonds. So depending on the oxidation number, the A, A means here, the benzene ring is here. This has a low binding energy. And if there is a uh, bond with the oxygen, it shifts toward the higher binding energy. And in the case of polypropylene, like this structure, it's a single peak because there is no oxygen bonding here. So uh, the chemical shift is explained like this. High oxidation number atom, if there is a high oxidation number atom, the atom is positively charged. So that means removal of uh, the valence, band uh, valence electron. So each co-level electron is strongly attracted by nucleate. This is a point we, by uh, positively charged, for example, here, the electrons are moved to the oxygen. So remaining co-level electron is more strongly attracted by nucleate. So that means large energy is needed for the excitation. It means shifting to high binding energy side. This is the, uh, the reason of a chemical shift, ba basic reason of the chemical shift. And then 
let me move on to the some applicational part of XPS. This is uh, 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 these are the uh, XPS spectrum. One is uh, excited by aluminum K alpha, and the other one is Mg magnesium K alpha. As I told you, the uh, the by using uh, the different type of excitation source, kinetic energy of all J electron is constant, but photoelectron is changed. And look at these uh, two uh, horizontal axes. The bottom one is binding energy. The uh, top one is kinetic energy. Depending on the uh, excitation source, the kinetic energy of photoelectron is different. For example, in here, it's like uh, 700 something, but in here, 500 something. So uh, kinetic energy is changed, but we use the uh, equation that I explained. We determine the binding energy. So 2p binding energy, both are same. Binding energy is same, but kinetic energy is different. This is the uh, case of uh, core electrons. But OJ electron, look at there. For example, LMM peak is here and here. The kinetic energy is same. It's like a 700 something. And it's also like a 700. But the binding energy position is different. So uh, using this one, uh, for example, if you notice the overlapping of Oshe peak on the uh, core level line, like, like this one, uh, the background is uh, very uh, strangely uh, affected by the LMM peak. Then the solution is changing the uh, excitation line like this. So uh, the, uh, we can precisely analyze the uh, core level uh, by removing of the information of uh, all shift line. Like this, we can select the uh, suitable background by using different uh, excitation. And then uh, second uh, application part is the depth profile. By uh, using argon ion, the surface uh, atoms can be uh, removed. Uh, this is an uh, example of multi uh, Thin film system on silicon, chromium, nickel, chromium oxide, chromium, and then nickel. So uh, multi-layer, five actually five layer thin films are formed with a, a certain, for example, this is a 30 nanometer thickness, each 30 nanometer thickness, and this is the result of XPS peak height. And the, in this case, the horizontal axis is sputter depth. It can be calculated by the uh, time, sputtering time. And first, nickel is observed like 100%. Then chromium starts. Then here, the oxygen and chromium are almost same. It's a chromium oxide. And then nickel, chrome, and silicon. Like this, we can... Uh, uh, observe the elemental information by using the argon ion sputtering. But the argon ion sputtering sometimes give uh, a damage to the surface. For avoiding that damage, the gas cluster uh, uh, gas cluster ion gun GCIG is used. Then uh, we can uh, make uh, argon cluster uh, ion like this. The size of the cluster is uh, like 500 argons atoms 
or a thousand argon atoms. That is a scale of the cluster. And uh, this is ion, but as you know, the argon uh, bonding, be bonding between argons atoms is very weak. So after heating uh, to the surface, then it's very uh, easily uh, broken. So uh, very soft, mild etching is possible by using argon cluster. So uh, this is very suitable for soft materials or preferential etching materials. For example, some metal oxide is a very uh, well known preferential etching materials. Uh, for if we use a argon monomer uh, etching system, then oxygen is always preferentially etch, uh, removed from the surface than the metal ion. In the case of heavy metal ion, the tendency is more severe. So uh, in that case, this argon cluster uh, etching is very effective. And also organic material, that is also very fragile. So uh, this uh, ZCIG is uh, very important. And in the case of thin film, we can change the surface sensitivity. And uh, you know, the escape depth uh, is changed by inclining the sample. And uh, this is a, a simple e equation. The escape depth is uh, equal to the lambda. It's a mean free path uh, and sine theta. Theta is the angle of a dejection. So uh, by using the theta equal 15 degrees, the, uh, it's a, a silicon and silicon oxide uh, films. On silicon, the silicon oxide film is uh, located. And in this case, it's be very surface sensitive. But if we increase the uh, angle, then in the case of 70 degrees, the si elemental silicon, the bulk silicon is observed. And uh, it's almost comparable with the oxide of the surface. So if we change the angle of a thin film, then we can uh, see the uh, surf we can separate the surface information and the bulk information like this very simply. But we have to be careful. If we use a very uh, uh, good lens, good means the effective uh, lens, then wide angle electron can be uh, collected. So this surface sensitivity controlling is not available. In that case, we uh, turn off the uh, the ef uh, efficient lens mode, it's a very simple mode. And uh, then uh, we can detect only the, uh, the directly emitted uh, inserted electron. So this is the key point. If we use a, the uh, magnetic lens, this is not available. Because in this case, the, for example, this angle the photoelectron is emitted by, but by using a magnetic lens, it's also come into the uh, electron energy analyzer. So uh, be careful about this point. And finally, I want to show the uh, our result. Uh, this is my uh, Malaysian student's case. And uh, the uh, doctoral student uh, Salina, uh, she uh, used XPS for dopant level detection. She uh, used niobium for uh, dopant of uh, titanium dioxide brutal nanorods. And the amount is like a 0.52% uh, to 1.6%. Then niobium can be detected like this. So uh, even uh, less than the, the 1% uh, 
we can observe that element in the system. The second application is the, uh, uh, this one, titanium dioxide, and it has a nanosheet. And this is the res uh, research uh, result by uh, Mr. Niti Anand and uh, Dr. Harish, Dr. Archanan, Dr. Navanitan. And it is published in the material, materials letters in this year. And this is a case of uh, titanium dioxide uh, nanosheets. And if we change, uh, and also we use the hydrothermal method for fabrication of the titanium dioxide film. And if we use the uh, ammonium hexafluorotitanate and uh, titanium chloride, and depending on the uh, ammonium hexafluorotitanate, the uh, final titanium di dioxide uh, morphology changes drastically. And uh, we found uh, in the case of AHFT uh, is used, the fluorine is observed on the surface. And fluorine uh, can control the uh, growth direction. A touch of the fluorine, the growth direction is well controlled. So like this, very surface sensitive technique is quite effective to determine the effect of a surfactant or the uh, controlling of a interface structure like that. So like this, XPS can be used uh, very effectively if you know the uh, detail of uh, uh, XPS uh, method. Uh, and also the uh, combination of XPS and uh, like uh, EPM and other elemental methods, that's also very important if we have uh, nanomaterials. And uh, by using the different uh, type of information and we can carefully analyze the uh, elemental and also chemical information. So that's all, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Arigato. Arigato gozaimashita. Thank you, sir, for your informative speech. Uh, I request the participants, uh, those who have doubts, you can click the option, raise hand. You can give the raise hand option. We will unmute, unmute and you can ask your questions. Jailish, ma'am. Ah, ma'am, sorry. Any questions? Ah. Ah. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Uh, in YouTube, um, Mr. Rupendra Kumar has asked one question Which type of research used in space science field? I'm, so, I'm sorry. The Which sound type is... of research? Which type of research used in phase science field? Phase, sorry, the phase. sound is uh, very small yes. and. Jayalaksh, ma'am. Uh, ma Jayalaksh, ma'am, louder, please. Hmm. Uh, which type of research used in phase science field? Ah, uh, space. Yeah, sir. Space, space. space science. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. The uh, I think uh, XPS is very effective for the space science, and uh, because the, in the case of space science, the surface material is quite important. Always the in the space, very high energy uh, radiation. Uh, the surface is exposed to very high energy. A radiation. So the materials selection is quite important. Also, 
the uh, the material is exposed to the vacuum also. So in that case, XPS measurement condition is very similar. X-ray is always irradiated and also the uh, it is faced uh, to the vacuum and like that. So material selection can be done uh, with a similar condition. And also uh, the uh, if we focus on the uh, chemical analysis, then uh, sometimes uh, aging information, for example, during irradiation of a high energy uh, high energy light, uh, then the surface is gradually changes like that. So that uh, the gradual change, chemical change is also uh, can be detected by XPS. Thank you, sir. Okay. Now yes. I request hmm. Ra Mr. Raja Raman to post his questions, to ask his questions. Sir, Raja Raman, sir, you can unmute Hi. and you can ask your question. Yes, madam. Thank you. Hello, sir. Very nice informative talk, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, when doping uh, some metal, transition metal in uh, oxide-based uh, material, hmm. most probably we didn't uh, absorb any peaks regarding doping. For example, bromium doped zinc oxide, we hmm. cannot uh, absorb the bromium peaks. Hmm. What is hmm. the reason behind this? Uh, this is because of uh, one reason is uh, the uh, uh, sensitivity factor of X-ray. The, in the case of boron, the uh, so, uh, the su uh, sensitivity factor is very low compared with a uh, like a transition metal or very uh, heavy elements. So uh, the comparison with the background uh, deviation, if background is high, then the deviation is also high. And if peak is very small, it is uh, buried in the uh, by, uh, background deviation. So that is the main reason of uh, you can you could not obtain the uh, impurity peak. But if you measure very very long time uh, the limited uh, energy region, then maybe you can observe, for example, in the case of uh, the, this one, the niobium of this peak, the student measured maybe uh, over one hour, so maybe two hours or some, something. If the uh, summation accumulated data, then it start to have a peak. So please uh, try the longer, uh, uh, period measurement. That is the advice. Other, if you could not ob observe, even though if you uh, measure very long time, then this is because of the uh, uh, high background with low uh, peak intensity. Thank you, sir. Now I request Kritika Selva, ma'am, to ask your doubt. Ma'am, unmute yourself, ma'am. Kritika Selva. Kirtika Selva, ma'am? Yeah, ma'am, you can ask your doubt. I, I, I request Bhakiraj, sir. Bhakiraj, sir, you can ask your doubts, sir. Sir? Yes, sir, you can Hello. ask. Uh, sir, nice presentation, sir. I want to ask one doubt, sir. I have prepared a binary metal oxide. Yes, okay, sir. In my metal uh, sample has uh, two different phases. Monoclinic and the tetragonal. The, the two different phases are mingled. How yes. to confirm? Is it possible to confirm in uh, XPS the phase changes? The two different phases. What is yes, the one, one phase? Monoclinic. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, the, uh, I am asking the uh, domain size of the uh, each phase. 
no sir in xrd spectrum it is uh, exhibit the two different phases hmm. on monoclinic and another only yes. tetagonal yes yes, yes i understood hmm. uh, the same the same data exhibited in the raman spectrum also yes the two different phases are uh, exhibited in the raman spectrum hmm. Hmm. i i want to ask the question it is possible to confirm in xps spectrum the space changes the if you can uh, estimate the size of the uh, domain is uh, okay. like a micron scale or okay, the na nano scale it's so okay, uniformly sir. mixed if if it is uniformly mixed then uh, by using uh, core level uh, chemical shift maybe we can determine but the Uh, just the difference of the crystal phase the element composition is same okay is it correct the elemental ratio is same okay so if so uh, the xps is not suitable for determine the phase but okay. uh, uh, the one possibility is observing the uh, ba uh, to band of structure the yes, the uh, so let me show for example uh, this is a case of uh, uh, ion and if you look at near the binding energy zero side okay it's very weak but uh, the band uh, information can be observed if you measure carefully so band structure may be different for uh, two phases and okay sir maybe uh, it is uh, possible to distinguish if you have the information of uh, uh, band for example if you have a single phase sample for both okay. uh, materials then uh, you observe the band structure for the first one and then measure the second one then mixed one then uh, probably you can expect the okay. uh, uh, information of the two different phases but unfortunately from a core level i guess it is very difficult thank you sir okay uh, yeah. now i request veena sn to ask your doubt yes can unmute unmute yourself veena sn yeah thank you ma'am yes Uh, it was a very informative session sir i'm happy to be a part of this uh, fdp sir i just want to ask yes. uh, which can be the probably the best method to synthesis a nano composite for thermal barrier coating application <laughs> it's a little bit difficult uh, question so Uh, like kind of which can be the most probably the uh, hmm. we can't say it, it will not it will not be rational if we say a particular method because research is never be final so hmm. uh, what could be the most probable uh, expected result oriented method to synthesis nano composite hmm. of uh, two compatible materials hmm. for uh, thermal barrier coating applications hmm. especially for aircraft engine turbines from point of view of uh, uh, engineering the uh, thermal barrier uh, materials mm -hmm. the uh, i think uh, more uh, the large scale information like uh, not the uh, atomic scale okay. but uh, uh, so like a nano material but nano means not the one nano two nano but the uh, maybe Uh, 10 over 10 nanometer uh, to 100 nanometer that scale is quite important so uh, by watching the uh, that scale uh, by using scm or other microscopic method that is i think it's very important but it's, uh, if they are connected uh, very tightly uh -huh. the particles are connected nanomaterials connected very tightly yes. then the interface is the uh, then uh, very becomes important 
that is yeah. a second step, I guess. Mm -hmm. So in that case, this kind of uh, uh, interface sensitive method like XPS becomes effective. So my uh, suggestion is... Uh, Sorry, uh, it may be a, a not a much related uh, topic mm, to ask, I, mm, I think, but I, I was yeah. uh, interested to ask you. Okay, so, yeah. yes. I didn't attend. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, now I request Sandhya Anand Kumar to ask your doubt. Sandhya Anand Kumar. Uh, yes, yes, sir. I'm, oh, I got to unmute. Yeah, Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Yes. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, uh, I have a. About satellite peak and information we get from that. Hello. I think I have a cross talk. Okay. Hello. Proceed, ma'am. Proceed, ma'am. I'm Sandhya Anand Kumar. Good afternoon, sir. I want to ask a question. You showed a, 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 a presentation screen in that uh, you show a five-layer thin film coating like silicon, um, uh, nickel, and the chromium. Uh, that how how is it possible you, uh, using organ iron? You are doing spectring, no? How how did you go? Is like uh, tunneling, or how did you? Uh, how were you able to get this graph? Uh, uh, and you you have to cover layer by layer, or like how did you? Uh, get into all the five uh, layers, sir, to okay. get this so graph. So this argon neon sputtering is not a tunneling, just uh, breaking the sample. Okay. The uh, irradiation of argon ion, the mm -hmm. surface uh, atoms of the sample is removed, okay. just okay. going away. Okay. So we freshly, for example, in the case of here, the first nickel is observed, but during uh, the argon sputtering, mm -hmm. all nickel uh, film is removed. Okay. Then the chromium is exposed to the surface. Mm -hmm. And uh, surface sensitivity of uh, XPS is very high. Only the chromium information can be detected. By etching, then, like etching, you remove etching, uh, layers? Yes, okay. etching. Okay, okay. Yes. so layer etching. by layer, we have to remove and uh, you have to yes. Yes. Uh, sputtering. Yes, Fine. inside a vacuum. Okay, okay, fine. Okay. okay, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I request Akin VP. Akin VP can ask your doubt. Unmute, sir. Please unmute yourself. Akin? Okay, I request Srinivasan S. Sir, you can ask your doubt, Srinivasan S. Please unmute yourself, sir. Yeah. 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 Can we get the same information uh, from XAS? X-ray absorption spectroscopy? By uh, the difference between the XAS and the XPS, the uh, XAS absorption in by using absorption the yeah. uh, sometimes we can uh, detect the information of the element but uh, like a xrf it's also the uh, elemental analysis method it's uh, uh, x-ray can penetrate uh, into the micrometer scale bulk so uh, the xps is very surface sensitive like a few nanometer so this uh, escape depth difference is quite important. And if you want to measure the surface information, XAS is not possible to uh, use. Just the information of the bulk you can obtain. So this is the key point. Okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I request Rajkumar, sir. Rajkumar, sir, you can ask your doubt. Uh, Akin, Akin, sir, you can ask. Okay, madam. Uh, thank you. Uh, sir, actually, it was a wonderful section. Uh, sir, my question is, uh, how can we detect this uh, coarser nanostructures using SPS? I mean, how we can identify, how will be the peaks? I'm sorry? Sorption? Coarse nanostructure, coarse nanostructure. C-O-R-E-S-H-E-L-W-L. Corption. Core shell nanostructures. Ah, shell. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> core shell nanostructure. So your doubt is about the core shell structure and? Uh, how we can uh, identify uh, core shell nanostructure using SPS? How the uh -huh. peaks will come? 
Okay. And uh, uh, look at this slide. This is the core shell structure. Uh, the A material is covered uh, with a B material. The, uh, in this case, if the thickness is, uh, uh, this is in the case of uh, thickness of B is 10 nanometer. And uh, if we think about the XPS surface sensitivity is a few nanometer, two nanometer, three nanometer. So we can only detect the B and uh, we are not able to uh, detect A material information. So if so, uh, then uh, argon ion etching is needed to get the information of the A material. So in the case of core shell uh, material, uh, very careful about the uh, surface sensitivity. And always you have to think about the uh, surface sensitivity of XPS. Is it okay? Yes, yes, sir, actually do something. Yes. yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Rajkumar, sir, you can ask your doubt. Sir, you are uh, yeah. Rajkumar, sir, please unmute yourself, sir. Ah, uh, hello. Hello. Good evening, professor. Uh, my doubt is regarding uh, quantification of uh, elements. I yes. worked in uh, carbon carbon uh, uh, materials, which is porous, and it has a lot of, and it has a lot of uh, functional groups. Uh, I did quantifying these functional groups, yes. and I wanted to know how exact will be this uh, quantification. Like okay. it has carboxyl groups, carbo carbonyl uh -huh. groups, hydroxyl groups, and all. So uh -huh. how far this uh, uh, XPS technique will be uh, exact in estimating mm. these uh, mm. functional groups. Mm. It's uh, always uh, we are facing to the similar problem. And in this case, the, as I told you, the, uh, it's a, a XPS spectrum, level spectrum of uh, P PET, polyethylene terephthalate. And the amount yeah. of this A peak is just uh, uh, three times of B and C peaks. It is equal to the structure. For example, A is from a benzene ring, six carbon uh, exists. And for B, it is from this, these two carbons. And this is uh, two uh, carbons are included in the uh, repeat, repeating uh, structure. And C is also two. This is also the same. So like this, the ratio is just preserved as the structure is. So like this, the, uh, I think it's a very quantitative, but if you notice the separation is not clear like this, then uh, for example, in the case of uh, very complicated structure and uh, there are so many uh, functional groups, then uh, the peak fitting becomes more uh, unclear. Unclear. So uh, in that case, we have to be very careful. If you have a standard sample, if you uh, have a very standard sample, and if you compare that one with your material, that is okay. And otherwise, uh, the uh, very careful for fitting. In this case, for example, if we have this one, this material, and if we precisely know the separation between the A peak and B peak and A peak and C peak, like that, the separation is uh, very clearly uh, uh, understood, then that separation of the peaks can be used for your material. Otherwise, uh, don't, my recommendation is don't go too in detail. Uh, it's a very, uh, in, it's including a very unknown factors. So that is my comment. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Thank you. I do have, uh, like, as you said, there is no separation between the peaks mm. and mm. many peaks are overlapped. Mm. So I couldn't uh, perfectly, uh, 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 like, uh, uh, so in that case, and, uh, uh, the, uh, 
it's very difficult to uh, separate clearly. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. And so other thing, mm. I mean, okay. regarding this um, uh, quantification, like mm. C double bond or C double uh, mm. C single bond. Yes. Uh, there is a lot of uh, differences in in literature, like. If mm -hmm. somebody reporting some particular binding energy and some other mm -hmm. reporting some other mm -hmm. binding energy. What is uh, like, what, how could I uh, take which is the correct one? Uh, okay, so... Uh, any standards uh, uh, like... Mm, the, uh, my recommendation is if you use the, uh, uh, for example, phi, uh, spectrometer, uh, alvac phi uh, XPS, then you should refer that uh, XPS peak that is measured by that system, that uh, XPS measurement uh, system. Otherwise, uh, if you use a different one, then, then uh, the, uh, the function uh, it is determined by the structure of uh, analyzer is different. So, uh, in that case, uh, please be careful about that point. The peak intensity sometimes changes depending on the uh, analyzer. And also, uh, if you have a standard material, well known material, then my recommendation is measure the standard material by using your measurement system. That is very clear. And uh, uh, clarification of the peak positions, then uh, that peak separation you should use. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, can I ask one more question? Uh, hello. Yes. Yep. Uh, uh, so, uh, sir, um, generally when we do XPS, there is usual shift in the um, peaks. And, and, there will, and we have to correct th those corrections. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. The sound is uh, uh, so sometimes Hello. Uh, broken. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, usually when we record an XPS, there will be shift yes. in the peaks. Yes. And we need to correct uh, the yes. peaks. Yes. And when you come to these complicated systems with carbon, it is yes. difficult to uh, correct those peaks because we didn't know which is the position of the, whether it is C double bond or C. Mm -hmm. C. Mm -hmm. I see. So, so feedback coating. Okay. Well, at that time, how, what, uh, what kind of procedure we need to mm -hmm. follow to get uh, exact uh, uh, results? Okay. Exact uh, interpretation. You, you are using the uh, carbon-based material, then yes, uh, the peak assignment should not uh, be done with a carbon peak. That okay. is, uh, um, as you noticed, the peak position changes uh, depending on your material. So in that case, very small amount of metal injection or uh, the other uh, additional uh, attachment of the uh, attachment to the sample that is quite effective. For example, if you have a mesh, then uh, your sample and mesh you can put on the uh, sample, and then uh, probably you can measure the uh, peak of a uh, metal mesh. Then determine the peak position. Otherwise, uh, you can use the uh, neutralizer. Do you use a neutralizer for the measurement? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. We do use. Mm. And uh, depending on the shift, uh, if you put uh, some uh, metal on it, then probably, if you, for example, if you use some uh, gold on your sample, then uh, gold position uh, can be fixed uh, by shifting uh, by the neutralizer. Then uh, carbon position must be uh, uh, in the, at the correct position, I guess. Suitable amount of 
neutral light uh, electron is uh, absorbed at the surface, I guess. So uh, my recommendation is use the additional uh, metal on your sample. Uh, that is effective to determine the precise position. Thank, Thank you so it's... much, Professor. It was a uh, very, uh, like, very, very informative for me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, now I request Jyoti Dalal Kapadia to ask your doubt. Please unmute yourself. Jyoti Dalal. <laughs> Bina ma'am. Yeah. Bina ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. YouTube is. Mm -hmm. Ah yeah. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Um, in YouTube, one participant have asked a doubt. Minita Ramakrishnan, could you please tell me about satellite peak and information we get from that? Sir. Yes. Could you please tell me about satellite peak and information we get from that? Such such saturation. Satellite peak. Sat satellite peak. Okay. Yeah. Satellite peak. Okay. Uh, there are several type of satellite peaks. For example, in here, the peak D is a kind of a satellite peak. One. Uh, this is. Um, because of the uh, band excitation. I mean, the, if there is a uh, phenyl functional group, benzene ring like this, then <coughs> uh, uh, there is a uh, excitation from a homo to lumo. This absorbance, because of this absorbance, there is a satellite peak. The, it was before, it was like a, a peak, but because of the excitation, it is shifted like this. So uh, one possible way is the reason of the satellite peak is the excitation of a homo lumo uh, gap. The other uh, possible uh, peak, satellite peak, is something like this one. For example, in the just uh, uh, higher binding energy of a uh, uh, strong peak, here is a small peak there. It's a, a chord. It is called the uh, uh, plasmon loss peak because of the excitation of the plas plasmon. Uh, this peak appears like this. And also, if you use the non-monochromatic X-ray, there is uh, the possibility of another line. For example, in the case of uh, magnesium K alpha. Magnesium K beta is also included in the line, very uh, weak, but like 10% uh, of uh, K alpha line. So that also give uh, uh, satellite peaks. So uh, uh, if you find uh, the, some uh, very unknown peak, first you should doubt the uh, satellite peak of uh, X-ray source first. But if you use a monochromatic X-ray, you don't have to think about that. Just the, uh, think about the plasmon or excitation or the, uh, the homo lumo excitation like that. Otherwise, uh, there is a possibility of uh, two different uh, Fermi level materials like uh, uh, the, the non conductive one. If you have a non conductive material and these uh, non conductive materials are not touched each other, then it, the peak becomes broad. And if one sample is charged, very highly charged, and the other one is uh, not so highly charged. So then uh, there, there becomes uh, two peaks. So uh, depending on the electronic conductivity, just you have to doubt about the uh, different uh, charging up effect. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
So th they are the uh, reason of the satellite peaks. Thank you, sir. Thank One you. more question by yes. Nyanam Selvaraj. Uh, how can we calculate pore width and pore volume of the nanomaterials using XPS analysis? Pore materials, porous. Yeah, sir. Pore width and pore volume. Ah, the volume. Um, difficult question. The, uh, in the case of very flat film, the XPS is very effectively used quantitatively. But in the case of uh, very corrugated systems, the uh, quantitative information uh, sometimes it's very difficult. But my recommendation is if, if it's available, you can use two different uh, energy excitation uh, source, like aluminum K alpha and uh, magnesium K alpha. In the case of uh, my XPS, we have a, a silver uh, target that has a very high energy. So if we use the different type of energy excitation, we can control the amount of the uh, kinetic energy range. Like, uh, like this one. If the kinetic energy is 200, then the mean free path is something like this, uh, less than one nanometer. But if we have uh, more energy, it uh, uh, becomes more the uh, longer mean free path. So depending on that one, uh, if we compare the two different kinetic energy ranges, then we may be able to uh, even the, the elemental information, even the uh, structure is like a poor, poor ass material or more very uh, complicated uh, structures. That is the uh, one advice if you have that type of sample. Thank you, sir. And one more question by Dr. C. C. Sangeeta. What's the advantage of hydrothermal method? Ah. The advantage of hydrothermal method, that is very uh, cost-effective one. One big advantage of hydrothermal synthesis of oh. oh. the picture is not up yet, but if you, if we use the hydrothermal uh, synthesis, uh, we can control the, uh, uh, depending on the temperature, we can control the uh, nano structure. And uh, also very important point is uh, by the hot hydrothermal method, high pressure, because of the high pressure growth rate is also uh, we can control. So uh, during the growth, it is very difficult to observe what is going on. But the uh, most important point is the growth. We can control the uh, growth uh, by uh, temperature and pressure. And also the, uh, like uh, uh, Nityanand's work, the additional element we can select the uh, growth direction uh, of a kind of a facet. So that's uh, quite effective, I think. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And one more question in YouTube, sir. Dr. Sri Lalita, what is the maximum aging of a sample to obtain effective characterization data? Maximum, maximum aging? of the sample to obtain effective characterization data? Uh, so, aging means? Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Aging, maximum aging of the sample to obtain effective characterization data. So, depending on the uh, situation, the uh, if the sample is, uh, very fragile one, then aging time is should be short. For example, when I 
used the very fragile material, organic material that is attached on the surface. The uh, strong X-ray irradiation can uh, make the sample changed. So uh, in that case, aging time is must be uh, aging time must be short. Otherwise, if the sample is very stable, uh, please uh, elongate the aging time. That, uh, of course, it depending on the samples and it's depending on the situation. I'm sorry, <laughs> I cannot uh, explain Thank in you, detail. Sir. Yeah. And one more participant in YouTube, she has asked, Lalita Priya, she has asked that, is it possible to find CH bond in XPS, even though hydrogen has very low photoelectron cross-section? Hmm. By using hydrogen, uh, as written in here, the XPS is, uh, uh, can be measured only for core level electrons. And if the hydrogen is used, hydrogen is only a, hydrogen has a, uh, only the band uh, electrons, it becomes broad. So uh, hydrogen itself cannot be measured. And also CC, a bond and CH bonds, they, their uh, chemical shift is almost uh, close to zero. So we cannot distinguish CH and CC from uh, XPS core level uh, spectrum. So maybe other method than the XPS is uh, effective, I think, for you if you wish to uh, determine the CH bonding. Maybe vibrational method is like uh, uh, if in the case of surface sensitive, the CH bonding is uh, can be measured by high resolution EELS, E-E-L-S, that is uh, quite effective to determine the uh, uh, CH bond. And uh, in the case of uh, uh, non-surface non con uh, conductive material, then uh, uh, FTIR or such vibrational method is effective than the XPS, I think. Thank okay. you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you so much, Sensei. Thank you. I have not listened to a talk like this on XPS. <laughs> very detailed, minute details you have explained us clearly. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Dear participants, feedback link is uh, posted in the chat box. You can fill the feedback link. Veena, ma'am. Uh, uh, Dr. Jayalaksh, ma'am, will give a word of thanks. Ah, okay, okay ma'am. It is my privilege It is my privilege to propose vote of thanks for the FDP organized by SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Ramaburam campus. First of all, I extend my sincere thanks to our chairman for his continuous support to conduct this FDP. I extend my warm thanks to our director Ramaburam campus for the perfect support and guidance extended to us for conducting this FDP. I thank our Dean ENT, VP Academic, VK, VP Admin for the continuous support and guidance. I extend my sincere thanks to our resource person, Dr. Mas Masaru Shiomura, for accepting our invitation and given a valuable session through this online platform on necessary information of our materials and device applications. He has explained about morphological observations, elemental and chemical analysis, crystal structure analysis, defect and impurity analysis. Sir, really it is a valuable session for us and I think it will give a new way to the research scholars who are proceeding research in that to proceed their research. Last but not least, I'm thankful to all the participants. I'm sure that the participants must have benefited by attending this FTP. Thank you all.
my sincere thanks to dr navneet research assistant professor dr harish assistant professor sir my st katanglathur arigato sensei arigato gozaimashita thank you very much thank you sir an instruction to the participants uh, dear participants i request all of you to join for tomorrow's session at 1:45 pm uh, professor a tamilavel department of condensed matter physics and material science uh, tifa mumbai will give a talk on a primer on crystal structure and crystal growth of rare earth intermetallic compounds so the zoom link for the second day of second uh, uh, two week fdp program will be sent to your mail registered mail id thank you